we're going to journey into the land where every test is valid, reliable, and free of significant bias. So will you join me? La da 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 In we go. A beautiful land full of beautiful blue peacocks. <gasps> but in every beautiful land lurks an awful, awful thing. This standard, some kind of a monster. In this case, it's not Voldemort. It's the standard error of measurement. And what is the standard error of measurement? It is the degree of uncertainty about a test's reliability. It's how much error is in a test. How confident can you be that the scores on the test are accurate? Remember what land we're in, the land where every test is valid, reliable, and free of significant bias. So we have examples of this. Here is from 2 June 2008, Obama and McCain. We see polls like this all the time. One of my friends is a pollster and they use 95% accuracy. Okay, 95% confidence interval. So we can see that with all white women in June of 2008, Obama was ahead. Uh, all women, all white women, Obama was ahead. But with suburban women, oh, McCain? No. When you look up at the top, you'll see plus or minus 3.1%. That means you have to add 3.1% to the number, add it and subtract it to get your 95% confidence interval. So you can be 95% that the percentage of suburban women who are going to vote for Obama is accurate, that your poll is accurate by 95%, and then you do the same with the McCain numbers. You take the 44% and you do plus or minus 3.1%, to be 95% accurate, that McCain, of McCain's true score in this poll. So let's do it. Uh, we're just gonna add 3.1 to Obama and subtract 3.1 from McCain. So adding 3.1 to Obama, we're at 41.1% and subtract 3.1 from McCain, we're at 40.3%, more or less, they overlap. And so you can't tell who is ahead. You cannot tell who is ahead. Now in 2011, fall of 2011, this was the big news. I got this off of Fox News. This was big news. For the first time in September of 2011, Mitt Romney, Rick Perry, and Herman Cain were within three, within the same confidence interval. You couldn't tell who was ahead based on the polls. You could not tell. You take Mitt Romney, plus or minus three, Rick Perry, plus or minus three, Herman Cain, plus or minus three. They all overlap each other, so you can't tell who's ahead. And that was big news because up until that point, Romney had been ahead and Perry and Cain were completely out of it. Big news, margin of error makes a big difference. Let's see what kind of difference it makes when we're dealing with our preschool children. So here we're looking at, remember what land we're in, where every test is valid, reliable, and free of significant bias. We're not in that land except for this little beautiful utopian period of time, right now. Okay, so you're evaluating a three year, two month old girl. She gets a raw score of 30. And the test we're using is the PLS-5 English, brand new test as of May, June, 2011. And that converts to a standard score of 76. With a mean of 100 and standard deviation of 15, this score is between 1.5 and two standard deviations below the mean. To be 90% her true score is reflected in your results, her confidence interval would range from 71 to 85, or moderately delayed to within normal limits. I'd like to go over to the board. Here we have a child. Her score is a 76. And we look in the PLS-5 manual and we find that her score 90, to be 90% confidence, it would range from seven, a standard score of 71 to a standard score of 85. So based on the administration of the PLS-5 English, we can be sure that this child's true score ranges from somewhere between moderate, moderately severely impaired to within normal limits.
That's all we know from giving this test. That's all that the test tells you, you know, even in this world where every test is valid, reliable, and free of significant bias. You can have a look at that, page 140. It's in all your test manuals. You can do the next one yourself. You can also look at here, I have the from the WIPSI 3, your confidence intervals for three-year-olds. The range for um, the performance IQ is huge. And the full-scale IQ, it's a very wide range. So when we think we can come down with a 76, oh, that's a problem or not. Even in the land where every test is valid, reliable, and free of significant bias, we have to think of a range. And it's given to you in the test manuals. So how does an evaluator decide whether a student qualifies for services when the confidence span is so great? What some evaluators do is they just ignore it. <laughs> or they say, she got a 76, confidence interval at uh, 90%, 71 to 85, but all they think about is the 76. You can't do that. It's just completely invalid. How can we ever use age equivalency scores, percentile ranks, and standard scores, given confidence intervals. And every test has error in it, every single test, even in the land where every test is valid, reliable, and free of significant bias. How can we do this to the kids? Now think about yourself, you're the little kitty there. How confident would you like to be? I use 90%. Pollsters for political polling use 95%. We should probably use 95%. I, st I probably should give up and use 95%. But to not even use anything? 76 is 76? The test says don't do it. We can't do that. Now, what does New York City say about that? <laughs> Check it out. The New York City Standard Operating Procedures Manual, School Age, says this. Assessment professionals should be careful to treat each score from standardized tests as falling within a confidence interval whose size is determined by the reliability of the test. It represents a more accurate description of the student's ability. It also makes a clear statement of our recognition of inherent limitation in the technology of standardized tests. There we go. So the policy is in place. It says do this, right? Now I'm sorry to say we have to actually leave that world, even though it didn't feel that beautiful to you after a while. We have to leave that world and go back in the world where validity, reliability, and bias is a serious problem. So here we go. Goodbye, world, where every test is valid, reliable, and free of significant bias. But think about how many preschoolers have been identified using invalid tests or by failing to consider confidence intervals. Hundreds, I would venture thousands.